Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. In today's workout, we're going to be building upper body strength and core strength for crow pose. So if you're watching this in the members area, this is part of a larger workout series focused on building the strength and the mobility for crow pose. So if you've seen some of the other workouts in this series, you know that crow pose isn't just about upper body strength. It's also core strength, it's lower body strength, and it's about getting your whole body involved in the posture. So having upper body strength is great, but it's not enough to have uh, just upper body strength if you want to be able to do crow pose. It takes total body integration, hip mobility, uh, core strength, and being able to put all of that together into a single pose. Um, and it's pretty difficult because when you are up in a crow pose, it doesn't last that long. Um, you know, you're not going to be up in crow pose for two minutes. For some people, it's only going to be one or two seconds. Um, ideally, we should get to a point where I'd say you should be able to hold crow pose for probably 30 seconds if you're, if you're really interested in getting a good crow pose down. Um, 30 seconds is a good length to be able to hold it. At that point, you're not just happening to balance. It's definitely a skill that you're doing. At 30 seconds, you're also breathing in controlled. You're not really struggling to hold it. It's something manageable. Um, and just with the rest of yoga, um, crow pose should be something that is slow moving uh, and in control. So that's why I say that 30 second goal. All right, let's get started. So uh, you'll need a strap today as well as two blocks just in case we do use, uh, just in case we do use those blocks, may or may not end up using them. Um, all right, let's get started. First off, I want you to grab your strap. Even if you think you're pretty flexible and you don't need a strap, just go ahead and grab the strap anyway, humor me. And we're going to hold that up about shoulder width distance, straight up overhead. And pull the strap in opposite directions. Pull your shoulders down. I want you to engage your shoulders. And then I want you to turn your palms to face in. So we are internally rotating your arms and pulling the strap in opposite directions. Press down through your heels. Make sure your core and your hips are tight. Take a deep breath in and lift. And exhale, lean toward your right, press your hips toward the left, still pulling the strap in opposite directions. You're going to press your hips lightly to the left. You want to keep your core nice and tight. You should feel your obliques engaging, but also stretching. Press your head up, get as tall as you can. Again, really squeeze your thighs. One more breath, lean to the right a little bit more. And bring it back to the middle, inhale. Maybe bring your strap a little bit closer. And then as you exhale, Bring it over to the left now. Hips to the right. Still wrapping your palms to face one another. So wrapping your palms toward one another helps your biceps to turn back. And that's going to help put your shoulders in the correct position. So notice how when I internally rotate my arms, my shoulders dip. So that's what I want to do here. And that's going to help me put my shoulders in the right position for when I'm doing crow pose, push-ups, anything upper body-wise. Go up a little bit taller. Breathe in. Exhale a little bit deeper. Hips toward the right. Stand up nice and tall. One more breath. And then bring it back to the middle. All right, one more. Go up. Exhale, reach back. Just three breaths here. Really squeezing the arms back. Pressing your arms up. Looking at the sky camera, saying hello. Press down through your heels. Squeeze your core. Squeeze your hips. Try looking up and try looking back a little bit. So we're going to get a deeper back bend, but still feeling this mostly in the core. Make sure to keep length in your lower back. One more breath. And go ahead and release. All right. Take the strap behind you. You're going to hold it about shoulder width distant, maybe hip width distant. Reach down toward the ground. Bring your shoulders up, back, and down. Squeeze your elbows toward one another. So your biceps are totally facing your upper body or your body here. You're not doing anything like this. Right, the biceps are facing forward. Your chest is nice and open and reaching your arms down and back. Now lift your arms away from your back and this is going to engage your upper back. So one thing that yoga doesn't do a lot of is strengthen your upper back. There's nothing to recreate a pulling motion uh, with an external load in yoga. Right? We don't have a bar that we can do pull-ups on. We don't have a weight that we can do uh, that we can use to lift uh, and do a rowing motion. So using the strap and lifting your arms away from your back like this is one of the best things we can do in yoga to help make your upper back active. And you're going to need that for crow pose. 
Lift up a little bit more. We're going to do two more breaths here. Keep engaging the back. Try to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Really feeling those muscles in between your shoulder blades engaging. Feeling your chest open. Feeling the upper back engage. Lift up a little bit higher for one more breath. Squeeze your biceps. And then go ahead and release. All right, take that down. And we're going to move down to the floor into a plank. Plant your hands, index fingers face forward, thumbs face in. Turn your biceps to face forward. Lift your thighs, squeezing your knees. Pull your body forward. Make sure your shoulders are directly over your hands, not behind, not forward, but right on top. And this is important. You want to make sure that you're pressing down into the ball mounds of your fingers. So I'm not pushing down into my wrist or kind of letting my weight dump into my wrist. I'm focusing on pushing down into that area where my fingers meet my palms. And then maybe looking slightly forward, getting a little extension through the neck to help strengthen my upper back. Keep your belly button tight and lifted. And now squeeze your hands toward your feet and your feet toward your hands for two breaths. So that's really going to turn your core on. Shoulders, upper back, chest engaged. Everything in the upper body and even the lower body engaged here. One more breath. All right, and then take your knees down, untuck the toes. We're going to pull your body forward and lower into a low plank with your knees down just to practice the form here. So I want you to make sure your chest is totally open here so your shoulder blades are pulled down and back, your elbows are squeezing in, upper arms are engaged. You shouldn't feel anything in the fronts of your shoulders. It should be in the chest and your upper back. If you notice that your shoulders are rounding in like this, pull them up. Keep your belly button lifted. Again, we're just practicing form here. It should be pretty difficult even with your knees down. One more breath. Press down hard through your hands. And release down. All right, little cobra. Reach the legs back, point the toes, squeeze your thighs, knees, hips, ankles, squeezing toward one another, tops of your toes pressing into the ground, squeeze your elbows back, bring your hands further back. It helps to bring your hands actually even further behind your chest to get a little more back engagement. And then barely lift your chest off the ground, just using the strength of your lower body and your core. Push the top of your head forward, press the back of your neck toward the ceiling, Give this one breath. And release down. All right, let's take this back into a child's pose. Make sure that the shoulders are nice and open. So knees are wide, big toes touch. Walk your arms out in front of you. Fingers spread wide. Once again, index fingers forward, thumbs in, forehead relaxed, arms squeezing toward one another. And work on lengthening your torso here. So the front side of your torso is long. We want to make sure that we're not rounding the back right now, but almost thinking of arching the back so that we can lengthen the front of the torso and get a nice stretch to the chest and shoulders. Squeeze your arms toward one another. And we're making this child's pose active. So make sure that your elbows aren't collapsing toward the ground, but you're keeping your arms squeezing toward one another, keeping the biceps wrapping up. Breathing in and out of the nose, tightening your core, so keeping your core tight, keeping the shoulders engaged, maybe playing around with your shoulder positioning, see what happens when you bring it up and, and down away from the ears, maybe bring it forward. Really what we want to do is have that internal rotation so the biceps face slightly up, and you're going to feel that in your upper back more when you do that. One more breath here. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and take it into a squat, just because I like squats. And that helps with crow pose, too. So, feet facing straight forward. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Tighten your hips. Externally rotate your hips to squeeze your butt cheeks toward one another, like you're pinching a penny between your butt. And then sit down into a squat. Use your elbows to drive your knees open to get a deeper stretch in your groin. Lift your arms up and lean back. Just a couple breaths here. Make sure the weight is in your hips and your core and your chest is lifted. So one thing I really like doing here, bringing your hand to your thighs like this and then lifting 
your chest away from your thighs really helps to engage the core and get you a better squat. We want to avoid the traditional yogi squat, which is rounding your back and doing something like this, and move more into a powerful squat like this, lifting up your chest, keeping the glutes engaged, and a little bit of an arch to your spine. One more breath. And go ahead and stand up all the way without leaning forward. Squeeze your glutes forward, tighten the hips. All right, we're going to move into a high lunge from here. So right leg forward, left leg back. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Push your right hip toward the ground. Take a couple breaths here. Don't worry about what your arms are doing right now. We're going to let the hips work into this. Big breath in. Exhale, sink deeper. So allowing your hips to come forward, allowing that knee to move forward. Putting the weight from all the way from uh, getting the hip and the knee involved. So from the knee all the way to the hip, feeling weight there. We want to start with the weight in the hip, and then as we bend the knee forward more, then we can feel it in the knee as well. But we want to get both joints involved in this, not just the hip, not just the knee, but working together. Go ahead and bring your arms up. Relax the shoulders. And I want you to bring your arms along your sides. And we're going to move all the way up, squeezing your arms toward the back. So what I mean by that, squeeze your arms toward the back as much as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Bring them back in. Bring your arms a little bit higher. Squeeze toward the back as much as you can. So getting the back active. Coming back in. Coming a little bit higher. So now our arms are parallel with the ground. Squeezing back. And back in. A little bit higher. Squeeze back. Stretching your chest. Getting the back active. Bring it back in. A little bit higher. Squeeze back. Bring it back in, and now straight up, squeezing your arms back. Bring it back in, and then release your arms. Go ahead and stand back up. Take a little forward fold here. Give your legs a break. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Make sure you're stretching your hamstrings, pressing down through your heels, pressing down through the feet, the toes, the arches of the feet. Squeeze your thighs toward one another. Maybe the fingertips touch the ground. Maybe you bring your fingertips to a block. Both of those work. Notice how I'm keeping my back flat here. I'm not allowing my lower back to round up like this, but I'm using my core strength to lengthen the front of my torso. So I'm keeping my abs long. <sighs> Maybe bringing my hands to the ground. Working on stretching through the hamstrings. Squeezing your quadriceps, squeezing the legs toward one another. All right, and then go ahead and sit down. We're going to come into a brief squat. Bring the arms out in front of you. Lift your arms. Just one breath here. Try to sink your hips a little bit lower than your knees. And stand up. All right, let's switch sides. High lunge, opposite side. Left leg forward, bring the right leg back. Press down through your left heel. Press down through your left foot. Keep your ribs up away from the hips. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale, sink your hips down. Allow that left knee to come forward. Knee over the ankle. If it's too easy, bring your foot forward a little bit more or tighten your back thigh. We should feel a nice stretch through the right hip flexor. Good engagement from the knee all the way to the hip. So the glute is active, core is active. Really, most of the weight here is in the hips. But again, we do want to feel the muscles connecting to the knee, engaging. So we want to feel the quadriceps really active. We really want to feel the muscle right here on the inner, not the inner thigh, but just inside the knee, your vastus medialis obliquus. This guy right here, he should be engaged. Well, it could be a girl, I guess. He or she could be engaged, whatever you want to gender, gendify, gen, assign a gender. Sorry. Bring your arms along your sides. We're going to do that same exercise again. So squeezing your arms back. Bringing it forward. Bring it up a little bit higher. Again, squeezing back. So this is a really kind of a cool exercise to open your chest and get your back active. Bring it up a little bit higher. And again, squeeze back. Bring it back in. Keep coming up. Keep squeezing back. So we're working on opening up the chest here, but also engaging the muscles in your back. And we're going through the full range of motion of your arms here. 
as we go up. Try not to arch your back as you're doing this. Our goal is to open the, your shoulders, not to arch your back. All right, one more, arms straight up, squeeze back, last one. And then release the arms. And then go ahead and step up. Take another forward fold. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Squeeze your thighs. Pull your chest forward. <sighs> Keeping length through your abs. <sighs> one more breath here. Open up the hamstrings a little bit more. <sighs> and then go ahead and sit down into that squat once more. Let's go ahead and balance out your hips one more time. Push down through your feet, sink your hips below your knees, bring the arms out in front and lift your chest. One breath here. And stand up. All right, we're going to take it down to the ground. Let's get your upper body. Plant your forearms, moving into a forearm plank. Squeeze your elbows towards one another. So this is a pretty important concept. I'm going to take my knees down just for a sec to show you this. But you really want to squeeze the elbows in as you're doing forearm plank. If you notice that your elbows start to slide out when you're doing dolphin or forearm plank, it's because you're not squeezing in. And no matter what kind of mat you have, your arms are going to slide, even if you have a cork mat. And that's okay because you want your arms, you want to be able to engage your arms. If you're not actively squeezing your arms in, you're not properly strengthening your upper body. So, all right, forearms shoulder width distant. Plant your hands, plant the elbows, the forearms. Squeeze your arms in toward one another. Press down through your forearms. Try to press down through your wrist. Your forearms might be in the way there, but still try anyways. And then look forward. Your shoulders should be directly above your elbows. Belly button is engaged. Hips aren't sinking down. Your hips aren't above your hip. Your hips aren't above your heels either. You've got a straight line from your heels to your head. Neck should be somewhat relaxed here. So make sure your shoulders aren't creeping up near the ears. Elbow still squeezing in. Two breaths here. One more breath. All right, let's take it down. And from here, let's move into a sphinx. So I want you to reach your toes back, point the toes, squeeze your legs toward one another, press down through your forearms, and actually use your elbows to pull your body forward and lift. So we're moving into an arch position here. Just getting a bit of a different stretch for your spine. Squeezing your hips toward one another. Thighs are engaged, so your knees are lifted off the ground. And then go ahead and pull your neck back. Look slightly forward and even try to look up here. Ten more seconds. Make sure your upper back and your mid back is engaged. So squeezing your shoulder blades together and lifting. Five seconds, keep your legs active, keep your abs tight. And release. <sighs> All right, so whenever we do a back bend like that, it sets us up really well for a down dog. So let's take it into a plank. And then from plank, we're gonna move back into a down dog. So plank position, bend the knees, shift your butt up and back. Reach your tailbone toward the sky, press down through your hands, and open up your calves and hamstrings. You want to make sure the shoulders are on either side of the torso, not up near the ears like this, but down. Biceps wrap forward, pressing down into the index fingers and the thumbs. Arms squeeze toward one another. And now that we've got the upper body in a good position, we want to stretch the hamstrings. So internally rotate your thighs so your kneecaps face slightly in. Press your hips back, 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 and use your breath to open up here. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, squeeze your quadriceps and push back a little bit more. Keep breathing. Again, a little push with the exhale. Three more breaths. So getting the upper body in a nice position here, stabilizing the shoulders, gripping the ground with your hands. Trying to bring the abs in, so tightening your ribs. 
All right. And then from here, we're going to move into a deep squat. So feet come out wide, about as wide as your mat. Squeeze your legs toward one another. Press down through your hips. Squeeze your glutes. Sit straight down into a deep squat. Bring your arms out in front of you. Drive your knees out. Bring your arms up. Lift your chest. If you want to do that little trick we did before, bring your hands to your thighs and lift away. That's going to help you engage your core. Make sure your glutes are engaged. And you're really squeezing your hips in toward the middle here. One more breath. All right, go ahead and stand up all the way. Press down through your feet. Squeeze your hips forward. Tighten your glutes. And then sit back down into the squat. And then bring your hands back behind you. And we're going to go ahead and sit down. And from here, I want to test out, not test out, but we're going to do this really cool exercise to replicate a crow pose but with no weight. So what we're going to do, you're going to come onto your back, bring your knees in above your hips, press your elbows inside your knees, bring your arms straight out in front of you, squeeze your heels in toward your butt, bring your arms up, and then press your core down. And this is very similar to what you'll feel in a crow pose. So right now the elbows are squeezing in, or sorry, the knees are squeezing in toward my elbows. My biceps are facing back. My arms are out in front, kind of like I would balance here, right? Abs are tight, belly button squeezing down. I want to have a, as close as I can to a neutral spine here. My back is going to be somewhat rounded, and that's okay. All right, and then we're going to change this up a little bit. Go ahead and release. Relax for a second. And now this time, we're going to squeeze the elbows directly into the knees. So instead of elbows inside the knees, elbows to knees. So knees come back up. Press your knees into your elbows as hard as you can. You're really going to feel your abs engage with this one. Make sure your biceps are still facing forward. Your fingers are going to reach down. So you are extending your wrist just like you would in a crow pose, right? We're not going to do a crow pose like this, but our arms are... Our wrists are at 90 degree angles, so you can hold up your upper body. And again, really squeezing the knees into the elbows, tightening the abs, looking straight up, keeping the neck relaxed. Try to lengthen your lower torso as much as you can. So make sure you're not rounding in like this, but keeping length. And you almost want to pull your chest forward and up as you're practicing this. Keep your fingers reaching back. We're going to do one more breath here. Dig into your elbows even more with the knees. And then go ahead and release. <sighs> All right. Let's go ahead and flip back over, and we'll do some upper body work. So we've done a lot of core so far. We're going to keep doing upper body, kind of flip-flopping, doing everything. So back into a plank. Hands over your shoulders. And we're going to practice the push-up now. So for the push-up, you want your arms, forearms to stay exactly where they are right now. But you're going to lower your shoulders forward and down to make 90 degree angles with your elbows. So it's going to look like this. Pulling my body forward, keeping the elbows in tight, biceps facing down, shoulders framing my torso, pulling the body forward. So this is the low plank, the low plank position. Biceps facing down, triceps wrapping up. My upper body's engaged. I'm not feeling any strain in the shoulders. It's in my chest, my arms, and my back. You shouldn't feel the weight in the fronts of your shoulders here. If you are, it means you're probably rounding your shoulders in. So make sure they're up. One more breath here. Push back up. Hold it. And take a little break here in plank. Two breaths. Still with the biceps facing forward. And still pressing down to the ball ends of the fingers, not dumping your weight into your wrist. Lower back down to that low plank. Bring the shoulders up. Pull your body forward. Squeeze your elbows in. You should feel your upper back engaging. Ten seconds. That's one breath. Take your knees down if you need it. Press back up. Two breaths in plank.
One more. Come back down halfway. Hold it. Three breaths. Pull your body forward. Squeeze the elbows in. Lift your belly button. Squeeze your thighs. One more breath. Press back up. Two breaths in plank. Keep good form, even if you're tired. And then release the knees down. All right, taking a little break here. You're going to grab the strap. Bring that behind you. Grip the strap, palms facing your body, and lift your strap away from your body. So getting your upper back engaged now, giving your chest a bit of a break, countering that. Slowing down your breathing to bring it all back to normal. Three breaths. Make sure your arms are locked out. Chest is open, so again, the shoulders coming up, back, and down. One more breath. And then go ahead and release. All right, we're going to take this into a low lunge. We're going to work on shoulder mobility a little bit here. So right leg is forward, left leg is back. Start by pressing your right hip toward the ground, making sure that that right leg is properly engaged. Take your back knee toward the ground, untuck the back foot, lift your arms. So getting a stretch through your left hip, getting really good engagement through your right hip. Arms are up. Now we're going to lean up and back. So I want you to lift your ribs up, look up at the ceiling, and squeeze your arms back. Make sure that your palms are facing backward here. So notice that I'm wrapping my palms in and then reaching up and back. This is going to help me open up this area right here in my armpit and the, the back of my shoulder. So as I inhale, I'm going to get longer, get a little taller. As I exhale, deepening. Three breaths here. Looking up, looking back. One more breath. A little more. And then release. All right, let's switch sides. Left foot up, right leg back, straight into it. Take your right knee down. Make sure the weight is in the left hip now. Knee over the ankle, right hip or right knee is slightly behind the hips. Exhale to sink your hips forward. Squeeze your right hip in toward the middle. Weight should be mostly in the left hip here. Not allowing your weight to sink into your right knee. Bring your arms up. Exhale to relax your shoulders. Turn your palms to face back. Inhale up. Exhale, reach back. So this is where we get into that different kind of strength. When we're working on mobility, it's not so much whether or not you can hold the weight. If you're doing a push-up, you're doing a squat, you can probably make it through it. Mobility is different. Mobility, it's really up to you how much you want to push yourself here. Can you hold your arms here? Or can you press up even more? Can you get past that point that's comfortable and work into your discomfort zone? That's when you're going to get stronger. It's not just going through the motions and making no changes. It's actively trying to improve, making those little changes. And that's what's going to make significant, noticeable changes in your mobility in terms of improvement. So again, wrapping the arms back and continuously straighten the arms more reaching back more. Two more breaths here. Keep trying. One more breath. And release. So you can tell, especially in my left arm, that as I'm reaching back and turning, that it's starting to fail. It's starting to shake, and my arm's starting to turn out a little bit. That's what you want to fight to get stronger. All right, we're going to move into a forearm plank from here. So plant the arms, squeeze the elbows toward one another, press down through your hands and your wrist, and a forearm plank. 
Make sure to keep the elbows squeezing toward one another. Your forearms should be parallel. All right, moving up into a dolphin. So weight is in the hips and the shoulders and the core. Walk your feet in about six inches. Reach your tailbone up and back. Press your hips back. Press down through your elbows. Put the weight in your upper back. Breathe in and out of the nose. Keep the elbows squeezing in, of course. Try to stretch the hamstrings. Push your hips back. Keep breathing. Try to make a straight line from your shoulders to your hips. I don't think I'm quite there right now. I'm going to work into my hips a little more. I'm using the exhale. Two more breaths in Dolphin. All right. And then go ahead and release down. Take it into a brief child's pose. Stretch out your shoulders. Keep it active. So fingers spread wide. Squeeze your arms toward one another. Release your forehead down. One more breath. All right, and we're gonna move into a down dog from here. So, hands shoulder width, maybe a little wider than shoulder width. Index fingers facing slightly out or straight forward. Thumbs facing in. Biceps wrap forward, squeeze the arms toward one another. Tuck your toes, press your hips up and back into a downward facing dog. Make sure to open up your hamstrings here. So you wanna think of lengthening the backs of your thighs. Feeling that stretch from the backs of the knees up through the hips. Tightening your abs. Upper arms squeezing toward one another. So you should feel your triceps engaging while you're doing down dog. It shouldn't just be upper back and shoulders and core and hips, which it should be, but there's also triceps involved and that comes from that little internal rotation. So wrapping the triceps back and the biceps forward. And that's going to help you strengthen your shoulders more. All right. Bring your toes to touch. Reach your right leg up. Hold it here for a couple breaths. Press the right heel back. Make sure your hips are level. Press back through your left hamstring a little bit more. One breath. And then squeeze your right knee toward your right elbow. Pull your upper body forward. Look forward, squeeze that knee up as high as you can. Squeeze your heel toward your butt, tighten your abs, hold it. Lift your knee even higher. One more breath, feel this in your lat. And then press back up, hold it here, one breath. Set it down. Lift your left leg up. Hold it here a couple breaths. Press your left heel back. Make sure the toes are facing straight down. Relax your right heel down. Press your right hamstring back. Open up the hamstring. One more breath here. And then squeeze your knee toward your elbow. Lift your belly button. Pull your chest forward. Squeeze your heel toward your butt. And you're going to feel this again in your lat, particularly in your left side, but also in the right side. Try to squeeze that knee in. Don't get lazy. Hold it tight. Look forward. Lift your belly button to your lower back. Biceps facing forward. One more breath. And lift back up to three-legged dog. Hold it here. One breath. Straighten the arms totally. And then let's take it into a deep squat. So give your arms a bit of a break. Sit your hips down. Let your groin open up. Drive the knees out. Squeeze your hips toward one another. Pull your chest forward. Bring your arms out in front of you. Breathing in and out of the nose. 
slowing down your breathing. Chest up, away from the thighs, getting your core active. One more breath here. And go ahead and stand up. All right, go ahead and grab the strap. We're gonna give your chest a little bit of a break. Gonna go back into a lunge. Get your legs working a little differently. Give your hip flexors a break. We've done a lot with those. So strap behind your back. Bring the shoulders up, back and down. Palms face forward. Bring your strap away from your back. If you're feeling pretty warm in the shoulders actually, put the strap aside and just interlace your fingers. So let's try that now. Just make sure that if you do interlace your fingers, you can get the shoulders down and back like this. If your shoulders are still here, you need to use a strap. Right leg forward, left leg back, sink the left knee down, keep the weight in your right hip, lift your arms away from your back, whether that's fingers interlaced or with a strap. Three breaths here. And yes, this is a chest stretch, but it's also strengthening your upper back. Not the same as a pull-up, but it is getting similar muscles. Try to keep your palms pressing together and your fingers tightly interlaced. One more breath. All right, release. Switching sides, left leg forward, right leg back. Sink your hips forward. Make sure the left hip descends toward the ground so your hips are facing straight forward and level. Bring your hands behind your back. This time, interlace your finger one finger over. So if your right thumb was on top last time, now your left thumb is on top. Interlace your fingers, reach down. Again, bring the shoulders back and down, opening up your chest. Lift your chest up. Lift your arms away from your back. Three breaths here. Try to straighten your arms as much as you can. It's not happening for me today, but it might happen for you. One more breath here. And release. All right, we're gonna do a little bit more upper body work. Burn out just a little bit, and then we'll finish up. So let's go back to a plank. Lift your belly button, squeeze your thighs, hands under your shoulders, upper body pulling forward, breathing in and out of the nose, squeezing your hands toward your feet, keeping the biceps wrapping forward. So again, make sure that your triceps wrap toward the back. It's going to help you engage your whole shoulder here. All right, take to side plank. So roll to the outside of your left foot. Stack your right leg on top. Bring your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder. Bring your right arm straight up to the ceiling. Lift your hips and hold. Look up at your right hand for a little added challenge of balance. And if you want, lift your right leg away from your left leg to strengthen the outer hip. Three breaths. Keep the hips up. Keep your right leg squeezing up. Slow, controlled breathing. Try to get a little more extension. See if you can get a little taller through your chest. Keep everything up. One more breath. And then bring your hands down back to a plank. Roll to your right side. Make sure your right hand is right under the shoulder. Rolling onto the outside of your right foot, stacking your left shoulder on top of the right shoulder. Bring your hips up, reach your arm up. Breathing in and out of the nose. Again, really keeping control here. It's just your body weight, you can manage it. Using your right leg here. Don't put this all in the upper body. Use your core, use your hips, use your thigh. This is actually a pretty good pose for building leg strength and strengthening your knees. Bring your left leg up, hold here.
Three more breaths. Slow and controlled, we're almost there. Keep the hips up, keep the leg up. Get a little taller, one more breath. Woo! <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> Take it down to a plank and then lower down to a low plank. Last one, three breaths here. Pull your body forward, squeeze the elbows in. Remember, 90 degree angles with the wrist and the elbows, belly button up, thighs engaged. One more breath. Back up to a plank. Got two more of those, and then we're done, totally. All right, lower down, halfway, hold it. Elbows in, biceps facing down, pull your body forward. Again, keep the shoulders away from the ears, pulling down toward your hips. Keep your chest open. One more breath. Push back up, plank. <sighs> We're almost there. One more of those. Lower down, hold it, three breaths. Elbows in tight, keep going, almost there. All that work you've done, you've got less than 20 seconds left. Elbows in tighter, control your upper body, use your thighs, use your core. One more breath, elbows in even tighter, squeeze every muscle in your arm, every muscle in your back and your chest, and lower down. Woo! All right, take it back into a child's pose. <laughs> <laughs> and then arms wide, knees wide, big toes touch, forehead relaxed, and go ahead and relax your arms. Don't worry about straightening your arms. You made it. Slowing down your heart rate, letting your shoulders relax. Deep breaths. You just did a lot of work. And we're going to finish up with a few restorative stretches for your chest. All right. And I'm going to have you lay flat on your chest here. And we're going to move your arms into half goalpost arms. So you're going to be doing this with your arms, one arm like this. So flat on your chest, bring your left arm out into a goalpost arm, elbow is level with the shoulder. Move your body just slightly away from your elbow. And then roll onto your left side, press down through your right hand, Relax the left shoulder toward the ground. And we're going to get a really nice big stretch to the chest there. Keep your head relaxed on the ground. So the left side of your head is relaxed on the ground. Big opening through the chest from the shoulder, maybe all the way into the sternum. Breathing slowly in and out of the nose. Just allowing that area to open up. Keep your arm relaxed, your left arm relaxed. Your right arm can be slightly active here. Maybe rolling back the shoulder a little bit more as you work deeper into the stretch. One more breath. All right, and then bring it back. We're going to switch sides. So now my right arm comes out. Again, that 90 degree bend. Elbow away from the shoulder. Move your body away as much as you can to create some space in the shoulder. And then roll toward the right. Move your body, again, away from that elbow. 
You should have a 90 degree bend here. Fingers are facing straight up. Right side of your head relaxed on the ground. Keep your hips neutral, so don't let your hips. You can bring your hips out to the outside a little bit, but you don't need to do anything crazy with your hips. If you want, you can actually extend your left heel back toward the elbow, like you see me doing here, kind of in a scorpion stretch. And that'll help you stretch your psoas, but we really did a lot of upper body work today, so I'd like you to focus on the pec stretch instead. Keep your head relaxed, keep breathing in and out of the nose. Oh, good. Microphone was not on mute. So again, just slowly opening up through the shoulder. Two more breaths. Last breath. All right, bring it back. Ooh. And we're going to go into a strap stretch one more time. So find your strap. Hold that behind your back. We're going to go about hip width, maybe shoulder width. It should be relaxed. It shouldn't feel too intense, right? We're in the restorative phase now. So you can either sit back onto your knees like this, sit back onto the heels, or you can stand up. Doesn't really matter at this point. So hands are about shoulder width distant. I'm going to pull the shoulders up, back, and down. Pull the strap away from your back. And just try to relax your muscles here. Just working on opening up the chest. You can lean your head toward the right. So let it open up there. Bringing your right ear toward the right shoulder, away from the left shoulder. Creating space from the shoulder to the ear. And then switching sides, leaning over to the left, bringing your head away from the right shoulder. Relaxing the right shoulder away from the ear, keeping the arm squeezing away from the back. One more breath here. All right, go ahead and release. And we've got one more just to give your back a little break. We're going to do eagle arms here. And if you want, throw in a lunge with this because we did a lot of work with your hips too. So right leg comes forward, left knee is back. Swing your right arm under your left arm, interlace your fingers as much as you can. Maybe that means pressing the backs of your hands together or even grabbing opposite shoulder blades here like this. And then bring your elbows up and stretch your upper back. So elbows up, forearms away from your face. Bring your hips forward, keep your spine neutral. Shouldn't be any pain in the back here. So no back bend, just keep the spine neutral. Two more breaths. Feeling the stretch through the upper back between the shoulder blades. And release. Go ahead and switch sides. Left leg is forward, right leg is back. Swing your left arm under your right arm. Again, interlace however you can. If that just means pressing the backs of the hands toward one another, go for it. Or if you can interlace maybe index finger, middle finger to thumb, which is what I do because I cannot interlace all of my fingers. Well, maybe I can today without a, well, do what you can. Some days it's better than others. If it feels awkward or hurts your wrist, then just interlace the finger uh, with a thumb. Or if you can, maybe interlace more. If you're a bigger guy, if you have bigger shoulders, it's really tough to interlace your fingers, which is why uh, I like to do the index finger to thumb technique. Not that I'm that big of a guy, but for me, the interlacing all the fingers is difficult. Focus on the stretch and not on what somebody else is doing. So if you're doing this and you're getting a good stretch through your upper back, keep doing what you're doing.
Let's go one more breath here. All right. And release. Go ahead and shake out your shoulders. Stand up. Give yourself a pat on the back. We are done. Thanks for sticking around. I want to invite you to join me for my free seven day challenge, Beginner's Yoga for Men. Seven workouts, seven days to help hold you accountable, to help you learn yoga and feel the results of your workouts. I'm also going to give you a free gift when you sign up, a head and neck essentials routine, 25 minutes to help your shoulders, your neck, your head feel great and relieve stress. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you on my challenge.